when I was getting into the program and when I was I was actually going through like all the interviews, I was listening to the podcast a lot. I literally told my girlfriend, I was like, I'm going to have one of those one day. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. yeah, I was like, that's going to be me one day. I'm going to have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> now we're here. We made it. <laughs> you know, and you know what's funny? You know what's, you know what's hilarious too? Like, I, I mean, I was going to get Nicolo on, on one. I was like, uh, Nicolo's like, yo, can I do my customer interview? I'm like, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. And as soon as like I saw you pop up, I'm like, I'm getting an that Nico, I'm getting, I, I want to talk to Anna, bro. Fuck that. Like, I want, I, I want to get you on one because other people have, wanted to have one as well too. I'm like, uh, like seriously, I, I sometimes hate doing these interviews because they're just like a drag sometimes. I'm like, fuck yeah, I want, I want to get Anna on this thing, That's even just to talk and say what's up, right? Yeah, I mean, can you just like tell us like who you are, like where you cut at, and just kind of give us some details about yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Anna. I'm 21 years old. I cut in Elk Grove, California, which is really close to Sacramento. And I work at Razor Sharp Cuts Barber Lounge. And you, um, and you charge fucking hundred bucks a cut now. Don't don't yes. fucking don't fucking don't discount that. <laughs> I, I guess like I mean, there's there's a lot of shit we want to dive into. And and has and has been in program for been in the elevated dementia program for like what maybe six months, six to eight yeah. months, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess like really what, what I want to dive in first is like what made you really want to start growing and scaling your business. I mean, like I know as like a barber industry. I mean, everybody wants to get the $100 per haircut. You did that. You, you went from 50 to 100 And again, I don't know the exact time frame. When, when did you join? August, I think? It was, it was actually in July. But July. I, I didn't get things started. I didn't really get the ball moving till like, August because July was a very, like, transitional point for me where I was, like, sure. moving out and whatnot. But, yeah, I was really getting the ball rolling in, in August. Got you. Well, I mean, for you, like, what made you want to start, like, growing and scaling the bar, your barber business in the first place? So I've seen, I've seen your ads all the time. I've always looked at them, but the crazy thing is whenever I watched them, it was like, oh yeah, that's me. You know, you were calling out me mm. and I was, I immediately doubted myself when, you know, I, I thought about the possibility of charging a hundred dollars for a haircut or charging prices like that. I, I would see like, you know, do you want to charge a hundred dollars for a haircut? I'm like, you know, I, I can't do that. I just can't. Mm. I can't. Even do though that. I'm from Sacramento too. Yeah. The fuck. But, <laughs> <laughs> Even though you cut hair better than me. <laughs> I, like, I just, I just feel bad. I feel yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that to my was, 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 was that so? You, you felt more, you like, you felt bad about like potentially charging your clients that much. Was that what it was? Yeah, I felt bad about no. that. But then I hit a point where I was, I got really booked up. And even though I do like little price bumps here and there, I'll still be booked up for like three weeks. And then I hit a point where it was like, I was like at 55. And I was like, I feel bad charging more than this. Huh. I don't know how to get further than this without possibly breaking my business. Okay. Okay. So it was, more, I, it was, more, it was more the fear of like, cool, I got to this point. I mean, what, what were you doing? Like five or 10 buck, like price raises? Like what, what was the process? Just $5 price raises whenever okay. I got really... Whenever I felt like I should raise my price. Sure, sure. What what yeah. what what was like like a six twelve month time frame? It's like the typical like little bump ups every now and then. I think I did maybe yeah maybe like two to three every year. Okay, okay. So not not too bad overall. It just wasn't like, I mean, again, too like you wanted something more. I mean, again, too like what made you. I guess what made you want to like, I, I guess, start scaling the business? What was like that line of the sand where you're like, okay, cool. I have this feeling. I don't want to ch charge them too much. I'm a little bit afraid, but I need to make a change overall. Because I hit a point where I just kept getting booked out and uh. I reached a cap limit of my income. And I, it was just like, okay, now what? It got redundant. Mm. Like things, it just felt the same every day in the shop. Was it like that cold moment where, like, where it was like, I always talk about like having that chilling moment where I like had that moment where like that sobering truth, like, oh, fuck, I'm kind of, not that you were fucked, but you were like, uh, I need to change something. Like, was there a single moment that stands out to you? I think it's because I also, I felt like I hit like a semi high point in my career fairly hmm. early and at a very young age. And I was like, shit, is this the rest of my life? Like, yeah, is it yeah. going to do like this for the rest of my life? I was like, yeah. oh, no. like I need to do something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, yeah. like you have, it's, it's almost like, uh, 
it was is my the, the, like is there is, is am I not going to accomplish anything great? Is this like where my story ends? I'm just chilling. Like I've reached the yeah. mountaintop type thing. Like, am I going to grow old doing this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My okay. body hurts already. Like my like cutting hair like really takes a beating on my body, mm. and it's like I'm this young and it's already hurting like this. How's that? I can't even imagine that when I'm yeah. 30, 40, 50, 60. How, 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 long, how long have you been cutting hair for, by the way? Uh, five years now. So I started five. my junior year of high school. Got you. Okay. So like you're 21, 22, like obviously like right out of high school, you went to barber school right after that? I did an apprenticeship. Yeah. Apprenticeship. So no shit. Right away. No shit. Okay. So like legit went right into barbering like is was that like something you always want to do is cut hair or like do you have a different plan or like do you just fall in love with it no so originally i want to do like marine bio environmental science but mm. through high school when i started getting more into my hobbies of cutting hair and dancing like most of my focus went towards my, my hobbies and my academic yeah. spell and then i realized how hard it is for me to excel in academics I just never felt motivated with academics. So mm. I was like, you know, maybe I only wanted to go to college because everyone around me is going to college. All yeah. my siblings went to college. And I thought that's just what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> but since I was already cutting hair and I wasn't really feeling the academics, I was like, you know, I'm already good at this. And so might as well, you know, go full force into this and just try that out. See how that is that goes for me. Did you ever have any FOMO of like not going to college? Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was that time period of um, like fall after I graduated, because mm. most of my clientele was like friends, Um, maybe like fall to like December, my clientele dropped because everyone- Everybody dipped. College. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, crap, you know, like, and then you see like everyone having fun. Yeah. That, like, partying, like, getting drunk. All, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not like super into like partying and, and drinking or anything like that, but like mm. just, yeah, there was a little bit of FOMO. Mm. How'd, how'd you overcome that? Like, cause I, I mean, I, I know I had that same thing. Um, I even, even though I went to community college, I was like, fuck I, Like I know for myself, I was like, did I fuck up? Like just doing this thing that being a barber and shit. Did you ever like to have that doubt at first? No, because I knew I had something going for me with barbering. Mm. Uh, you, you, you see, you, I see, I, I, we, we talked about earlier about the tenacity thing. We're going to get into that. You had more tenacity than me. Cause at first I was like, I'm, I just fucked my life up. I was, I'm, I was depressed little fuck for like two years. Like, Oh, why the fuck did I become a barber? So I think, I think for you, like, I mean, again, too, just kudos to you overall, especially being at 18. Um, so you got into the barbershop, you're an apprentice. Obviously, you got to like 55. Now you're at 100 bucks a cut. Obviously, we just went up, what was it, like a couple days ago? Yeah, a few days ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk to me about that process. I mean, like, obviously, like, we have barbers, like, you mean in the program that we work with as private clients. Obviously, you're in a barbershop with how many barbers? There's 10 other barbers. Jesus, fuck. So 10 other barbers. I mean, there's, there's, there's barbers like yourself. There's barbers like South Bay Chris who cut in the parents' garage. Barbers who cut in like a private studio. How is it like, like I guess, scaling your prices up and I guess doing a program like this with other barbers who I'm assuming are charging less than you, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's well? definitely helpful that – so we have two sides of the shop. So each each side has five chairs, and then mm. there's a room, there's a suite in the back. So I'm in the suite in the back, and I think that definitely helps – with just my focus and being able to do my own thing mm. in that space. But there's, it, it is difficult, like being around barbers sometimes, you know, like it's, no, the, the, the environment is just not, not it sometimes. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a barber. It's, it's still a barber shop at the end of the day. Like, like yeah. even for me, like cutting hair in downtown Sacramento, a very popping shop. It was, I still had to go into the shop headphones in, not talk to anybody. Cause you could get, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's still the same like type of environment. Bullshit. Everybody's talking about sport. It's like the same conversation going on day in and day out type thing. Yeah. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm definitely able to separate myself a little bit in, in that mm -hmm. room and just kind of like be in my own little bubble and do my own sure. thing. Sure. Yeah. What, what, what do they think about like you, like with your pricing and like the way you took your business? Most of them are actually pretty supportive. Um, mm. I've, I've grown pretty close to some of the barbers there. Like 
some of them are like really close to me so you know they'll come up to me and like when i first posted my price raise a couple of them were like yo good shit like come yeah, yeah. and yeah. then my friend was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but, like, i i do definitely feel a little bit like tension sometimes mm. or like sometimes i I get scared that people think like, oh, she she thinks she's such hot shit. She thinks that mm. she's better than all of us or things like now, that. I got a great question for you. Do you feel like that's an internal thing or do you feel like that's actual like like something that, that's going on? Or is it more of like maybe just more that's going on something internally in your head that you're maybe – I don't want to say making up. Obviously, it's more of like a uh, just something that's going on in your head. It's probably internal. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think it's – I mean it's always that internal shit like uh, – what is it? Like even even like – uh, when we're talking to barbers who are just like, oh, I don't want to like run five minutes late. The client's gonna, it's kind of so pissed off. I'm like, well, have you asked them? Like, you know, like if you ask them, like, hey, do you mind if I'm taking five extra minutes to like rush to the end of the cut? Um, and I think at, at the end of the day, too, a lot of barbers. I mean, hell, I mean, a lot of barbers even psych themselves out, kind of like what you did almost prior, like before the program, of like, oh no, like you know, what are people gonna think about me and like be shameful, like. I don't know. I mean, this this might be a great question too. Where do you think feel like that comes from? For it, just just in yourself, like I know for me, like that came with like the charging thing. I was very timid at first for charging and like scaling up my prices because like I I came from like a a a I guess section of people who were just very you know fuck the man. You know you got like you can't overcharge all that shit. You got to put on for community type shit. So I almost felt like I was going against them by yeah. trying to improve my life. Like, wh where do you feel like that comes for you or that came yeah. from for you? I, I definitely think it, it felt evil, you know, like rich people mm. are evil or people wanting more are evil. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I just, I would feel bad. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm almost robbing someone for mm. charging a price like that. And I, Deep down, you know, I'm I'm a people pleaser for sure. Mm. So I just I just want I don't and also I know money is very sensitive for a lot of people. Yeah. So I just get nervous when like it attacks people like personally. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I got quite another question for you off topic. Like, um, did did you grow up like parents or anything like that 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 were like doing business like that or like did they did they just like work the normal jobs? Uh, just normal jobs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I always think like, again, too, like, cause my parents, like they, they both worked like the city Sacramento. They were like, uh, I don't know if you know what fourth R is like, it's like the, um, childcare services after like after school childcare type thing. Oh, so okay. like, they were like, uh, yeah, they were, they were people who ran like their own, like, um, their own, I don't want to call them departments, but like at their own schools, they're the head coordinators. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, for me, like I never, I never knew what business was cause they didn't know what business was. So at the table, like dinner table or like family outings, they're only just talking about like, you know, like staffing and like, oh, we got to take care of this. Oh, they don't, you know, they have all this money, but they don't want to fund this. It kind of built this inner belief of, yeah. in me, like growing up of like, oh, people who have money or big things about money are bad. Like they do bad things. They don't take care of money. Whereas like now, I mean, I, I think, I feel like you for sure have a different idea of business. Like, what do you feel like that big difference is from like maybe what you once had, maybe like hell, maybe like a year ago of business versus what you have as, uh, right now, idea wise. Most definitely. Um, I felt like I, I still had to make things very accessible for everyone. Mm. And <clears throat> that charging more was like exploiting people. Mm. But, it, it, instead of like helping yourself out and like improving your yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like I need to stay at a lower level as well and not yeah. make as much income because yeah. I'm helping people, even yeah. though I can still help people and make a higher income. And the switch was, you know, realizing that I, I don't have to be the barber for all those people. Just because they can't afford my haircut doesn't mean that they can't go to someone else that they can afford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that their money problems are not my money problems. Yeah. 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 And, and also I think too, like, um, I mean, you're, you're probably just getting to this. You probably already had this, but like even clients who like leave, leave you at like, you know, once you start going up, they, I mean, like 
sometimes they're really inspired by your story. I've had clients like in the past who were just like, yo, I'm so inspired by the fact you're growing your business. I've stuck with you since day one. And yeah. you know, they get whatever they got going in their life and they get their shit together where, where, mm -hmm. whatever, if it's like, you know, the job they're working at or like the business they've always put off. And like, they always tell me, Hey, you inspired me to do this because you took your shit seriously. So I think it's always like, I think us as barbers, I think a lot of us like try to help people out by keeping, you know, our own income down as a byproduct of that, like trying to help others out, like, okay, I'll, I'll give you a deal here. Yet, like, I think you, we can all do so much more positive things and help other people out if we improve our own life. It's like the, uh, what's it called? The, the fucking face mask thing in, in, a, in an airplane. You got to put your face mask on first before you can help anybody else. I think it's the same thing in, like, life. You have to help yourself out first, put yourself on game so you can help and pour into others. I think there's too much, right. in, the, in my opinion, in the barber industry. I mean, I've said it in a video before and I, people got pissed at me, but it's all regurgitated bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody like is like at a lower level, like throwing up at everybody's mouth, like the same dumb shit. And everybody's just, like, kind of eating it up because there's nothing else out there. I'm like, okay, do you guys not like open your eyes and see what the fuck's going on? So yeah, um, yeah, definitely. When I like, when I see the opportunity to pour into a client about yeah. something like that and, and motivate them to yeah. go for whatever they've been putting off or like places where they can make changes in their life for the better. Like I, I love doing that. And it has so much more imp impactful, uh, I guess, or just has so much more impact because you've also gotten the result to back it up. Like that's huge right. too. Like it's one thing, it's one thing just to say that to hype people up, but it's another to be like, you actually a person who got a result and telling somebody else and they're like, Holy fuck. Okay. This holds weight, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Cool. Definitely. I guess for you, like, like uh, obviously, like, um, you are like the first. We talked about this before. The, you're the first uh, woman to be interviewed on on uh, from being inside the program as well, too. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to get your insight. What's been like the the hardest thing about being a female barber in the industry? Obviously, I'm a male barber, like, or was a male barber, so I have no clue. At least, like, maybe like what you had to deal with, or if there was anything that like was hard about being about coming up in the game overall for yourself. So when I first started at the shop that I'm at. I was working along next to the rest of the barbers. So mm. something that would really irritate me was the conversations that were being made mm. about women, usually mm. you know, like, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Degrade yeah. women. And it was like, it would piss me off so bad, mm. so much. And, um, I think that was one of the struggles, like just, not feeling respected. Mm. And another thing would be people automatically doubt you as a female barber. They automatically think of you as less than. Um, so like, say for example, people will call on the phone for an appointment and then they will be like, okay, we have, say we have Anna available. Like, oh, Anna, mm. like a girl. And they're like, okay, actually, never mind. I don't, like, you know, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. And it's like, hey, bro, you can have the best haircut of your life, you know? Yeah, yeah, you just turn it down. Why are you the fuck up? The fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And, um, or say, for example, one of my clients would, would tell me, like, yo, someone complimented my haircut. And then when I told them that you were a girl, they are like, oh, wait what like can she even cut hair it's like yo you're the one who complimented the haircut in the Bro, first place yeah yeah <laughs> so it's it's just things like that um mm. that was probably the most difficult part about being in the barber industry just what, being... what, would, what, would, what would be your word of advice to like maybe any up-and-coming female barber like that might be going through those same things as well so what i do is i just use it as motivation to prove them wrong Mm. It's like, okay, well, they're in their own mindset. You can't change those people, but you can do your best and your work gets put out there every day from the clients that you cut. So just put the best work out possible and always work on improving. And then, you know, hopefully like move into social media, content creation and show your stuff to help inspire other people and show them that like, you're killing it. Like, mm. You know, you're completely capable. It doesn't matter your gender, who you identify as. Like, we're all just people cutting hair. It doesn't mm. matter if you're a guy cutting hair, woman, or non-binary. It doesn't matter. Mm. 
Well, I guess I guess for you, I know I know you talked about like using it as motivation. Is that what you did to overcome that? And I guess what what did, what would what did that look like for you? You could have your Michael Jordan moment where you took it personally and shit, but you you know whatever you gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, I think I was always aware that you know I'm. I had a pretty good skill set. You know, I'm mm. like generally like I'm very lucky that whatever I start out with, like anything that I start, like I can get pretty pretty good at it, and. I was just like, you know what? Just let the work like talk for itself. I just kind of brush it off. I was like, I approve them, you know? Yeah. They'll see. How 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 was it like like especially for when you like not just in the barbershop, but when you first started cutting hair, especially like I don't know when like let's say in high school. How how was how was it like that for for you? Because I know. Um, I mean, I, obviously a barbershop's one thing, but then again, too, you're not even in a barbershop prior to that and still have to deal with that dilemma. Like, what was that like? Mm. I think it was it was fairly easy because mm. I was cutting a lot of my friends. Sure, sure. And I was also in two dance teams. So I would just cut my peers and it would, they would all be really nice. But, yeah. you know, I know there's people like kind of my friend also told me, like, he remembers people telling him, like, oh, like, she's not going to make it. She's she's not going to do this and that. She's not going to, like, she sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me this later on that, like, people were saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. What got I, you? Never, what, I never what really got heard you? it directly. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, that's a good fucking friend, too, to make sure, like, you, like you, especially early on, like, hey, you're probably like, hey, shut the fuck up. She's going to be a bar ass barber, right? Like, I guess for you, like, especially like, uh, how did, how did you even get into cutting hair? Like, was it just something that you like found on YouTube, picked up? Like, how, how did you even come across this? Yeah, just YouTube. I just saw a bunch of YouTube tutorials and I was like, that looks pretty satisfying. It looks. No shit. Yeah, it looks technical. When huh. I was watching the tutorials, I was like, okay, there's actually a lot more that goes into a haircut than I expected. And. What's funny is that when I was little, I was maybe like five or six, I was cutting my own hair. So like, you know, I'm not, I'm not super girly girl, mm -hmm. I'm a bit more of like a tomboy. So I wanted to cut my hair short, similar to like my guy friends. And then like, I would style my hair too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that kind of draws to me being interested mm -hmm. in the hair, like way back. But you know, it, what really uh, sparked it was going through youtube and watching youtube tutorials was it was it just like you just found a youtube tutorials one day and like they were they were satisfying to watch and then you just kind of got enamored with like the craft and you're like i want to try that shit out yeah i was like i just want to try it and then i knew my mom had some like costco clippers like costco walls yeah yeah and I was yeah like, you know, I was like, let me cut my dad's hair yeah oh my gosh those clippers are terrible like i think yeah. she's been using those for like 10 years and oh, never still used them. yeah oh my she cut God. like my dad my brothers yeah but like you do multiple passes and there's still like hair, like hair, yeah, there's still like hair, hair sticking up and shit. Yeah. And it had like yeah. the, the, around the ear guard mm. where it's like tapered on one side. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then, um, she was like missing guards too. So it went from like a, like a two. <laughs> to a yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my God, what am I going to do with this? But like, I'm really thankful. My dad actually helped me buy my first pair of clippers and nice. like, first set of things I actually needed to get things nice. going. Nice. Um, I, I guess like a, a, another question I definitely want to get into, cause like, look, I mean, I know we talked about it. Like you were in the program since what? June, Jan, uh, July, I guess August. That, that's when you get really got locked in. Then we were able to go up from like 55 to 75 now from 75 to a hundred. Um, I guess like, 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 uh, what drives you to keep to push for more uh, again? Like, because like, I, I think in the barber industry, like I, I've been very vocal about, it. there's a lot of barbers who are either very complacent uh, or, I mean, like, for lack of a better term, it's kind of lazy about the business to kind of, like, get at a cool level and just kind of stagnate off for however many years and, like, 10 years past. Like, what 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 drives you to keep for pushing for more then? I feel like I can't disappoint myself, give up on myself, and also give up on other people that are counting on me. Hmm. Who do you feel like is counting on you? I feel like you are. 
I mean, you know, you give me mangoes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I mean that. So, so like, like, okay. So you see, you say me. Who, who else do you feel like is counting on you? The coaches that I worked with too, mm. Paris, Michael, Anthony too. Um, I think also people in the program that have seen my growth mm. and how fast it's happened. I've been able to inspire them and there's almost like this expectation that I feel like I have to fulfill. Mm. And then also with myself, like there's, there's really so many days where I'm like, what if I just fucking quit right now? Like, really? what if I just give up right now? Yeah. Mm. Like I go through that a lot. And I'm like, no, can't. This can't is actually, that. let's, let's, let's talk about it. Cause I think a lot of people inside the program, outside the program, like I've, I've gone through that as a barber too. Hell, I still go through that. Like sometimes even like, like, uh, with the company I'm running right now, new era barbering, like what, what, what do you, what kind of like goes through your head? And like, also like, what do you do to get yourself out of that funk? I guess. Let's see. I just, I get overwhelmed very easily. Hmm. And I think especially like with the work with that comes with the business and then also the, the physical, how physically taxing it is on my body too. Yeah, having yeah. those two things tying together. I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Hmm. Like I, like I just want to be done. Like, I don't want to have to deal with this anymore, but it comes back to, sorry about that. Are you good? It comes back to, it's like, I, okay, like, if you quit, then what what are you going to do after that? Yeah. It's kind of like, just self-talk. Like, what are you going to do after that? Like, this is the only thing you really have going for you right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. I just, I just hear, you know, I listen to a lot of, like, your podcasts and everything. And it's like, this is the best thing I have going for me now. You know, it may suck. But that's why we have to push the business and scale it up as as much as possible so we can get out of this position and yeah. not stay in it forever. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Like, did I like staying up to, like, 2 a.m., getting two hours of sleep, cutting hair, and, like, pushing the business? Like, fuck no. no nobody does, right? And I think no. in the moment, it's, like, working out. Like, does anybody really like – you know, unless you're a psychopath, like sometimes I'm a psychopath and I'll bleed out my ear during the workout. Right. But like for the most part, like during the workout or like during cardio, I fucking hate it. Right. Like it's painful. And mm -hmm. like, it's the same thing with the business. But like, when you look back in hindsight, you're like, man, I'm so fucking, I'm so glad I got through that shit. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad I pushed through that. And I think that's one thing I know. I mean, for myself, and I hope everybody in the program, like yourself too, like even just looking back from 55 to hundred, like, I think there is some like that look back of like, Fuck, I'm proud that I kept on pushing through those things, right? For me, I'm I like, I look at my whole barber career of like how it went through being a depressed little fuck, scaling the business up, downing to even now where I'm at. I'm like, I'm glad I just did not give up. I'm glad I didn't, I didn't throw in the, throw in the towel and just like quit and like be like everybody else. And like what you said, what else am I going to do? Yeah. Right. I just spent like, I mean, for you, you said you spent like five years of your life to this, to what? Just throw it away and be like, fuck it, I'm done. Right. I'm like, right. to me, I got some pride. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm not going to just waste that much time in my life on something and just be like, fuck it, I'm done. I would never allow myself to like live with that, right? Exactly. I got to keep at least going to see where this thing takes me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, and I think, I mean, I mean, for you, like what, uh, I guess a, a, a kind of flip side question. What, what do you feel like gets a lot of barbers maybe in that space of being lazy, complacent, and, and just as the industry is, is, as a whole right now? I think a lot of barbers, they want to go into barbering because they can create their own schedule. Hmm. And I think that's also a double edged sword because they, they can, you know, come in whenever they want, leave whenever they want. And then since they have so much flexibility, you know, they spend their free time doing things that are not progressive for themselves mm. and then the environment kind of feeds off of each other it's like a it's like a like a feedback loop or like a very negative feedback loop where like you just you're not getting anything progressively done you're not seeing you just kind of like stay in that cycle almost right and then mm. say it's like a new barber is coming into a shop and then 
that's what all the older guys are telling them or people, more of the vets are telling them and that's how they live, then that's how they start to run their business. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. They think and that, that's just how it's supposed to be. Regurgitated bullshit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like once, once I peeped that game, I was like, what the fuck are we doing in this industry? I think like, that's like such a big, I mean, you, I mean, you guys know I went when we're on Q and a calls, I would just say, man, fuck this industry, man. Like, like fuck up the industry, like really shake it up. Cause like it's wide open for everybody. Like it, it's there for the taking, like anybody and everybody. It's so easy. I've talked about this on videos before you just, I mean, like, like for you, you just had to put in a little bit of work. Yeah. Yeah. It sucked. It sucked just like mm -hmm. anything would, but you just kept on going. And like, you realize, mm -hmm. holy fuck, I can really scale the business up because so many people are not taking advantage of this time frame. They're just like, mm -hmm. they rather sit, sit, I don't want to say sit on their ass, but they just like take a set uh, the, the back seat mentality instead mm -hmm. of like in the driver's seat mentality of their own life. And just like, you know, chill and let, let life drive them where they fucking want to be. Yeah. Um, I was definitely at that point too. I was just like, yeah, we'll see what happens. It really? is what it is. What got not you, what got you, what got you out of that? I think what happened was well, I was trying to move out and I hit a little reality check that things are more expensive than I thought. Mm. And I wasn't actually making a lot of money when I thought I was making a lot of money. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially for someone my age, it's like decent. Yeah. And, yeah. and also when you're not paying rent and a bunch of bills, Bills, food. It's, it's like it's good money, right? You know, you can yeah, buy whatever yeah, you want, yeah. really. Yeah. And you're seeing the cash flow every day. And you're like, ah, you know, yeah. I'll make it back tomorrow. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I I was looking at rent and I was like, oh snap. Wait. This is uh yeah. I'm not making enough. Yeah. And me being booked out already kind of reaching my cap, I was like, Oh, this is I don't want to live like that. I don't want to mm. be broke and living month to month pretty much yeah and i think a lot of barbers put themselves in that situation like and, and like kind of just accept it i've talked to a lot of barbers like whether it be on call or, or whatever and they're kind of just like oh yeah i'm just I'm like i'm just you know i'm, I'm hey man like I'm work with what i got I'm like you know you're a business you can make more it's not like you're nine to five where you're just stuck at an income level you can make more if you push the damn thing forward yeah. um yeah. and yeah instead mm -hmm. of like having to budget or like say like oh, okay this is it like this is all i'm gonna be and this is all i'm gonna do right yeah and another thing is I've, I've been really blessed to be in like an upper middle class home and be mm. raised in an upper middle class home. So when I was looking at opportunities for uh, places like I wanted to live in, I was like, shoot, what I can afford is like not what I feel comfortable living in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the standard has already been set mm. where, you know, I want to be in a nice neighborhood. You know, I want to be in a safe neighborhood. And things to look a certain way, but I can't afford that. Mm. And I was like, okay, how can I make this work for myself? Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you just start put two together. Like, all right, well, I got to start taking better care of the business, obviously, and like start looking for like a different, different way, way uh, to get things going. And um, I, I even considered working another job. Oh, really? Yeah. But just because like you were, you were at it, you were like, all right, like you, you just even thought, cool. I'm not like, I'm not going to try to like grow the business anymore. I'm just going to get a different job. Fuck that. Yeah. And it, it was also like for my body too. I was like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah. if I can't work more days, you know, how can I make sure my body is still good mm. to keep doing barbering, but also make some other income too. Yeah. But then I also realized, you know, like I don't have whatever job I'm going to get, it's not going to pay the same as what I'm making with cutting hair too. I would make, I'd probably end up making less. Yeah. And then my energy would also be split. So I'd be one foot into this job, one foot into cutting hair. And I think things would just fall off from there. Yeah. Or, or again too, like, you know, you would just, your body would give out on you. Cause like oh, overall, like, I, th I think we talked about this before, like, like, but like standing on your, your feet all day long. Cause like, I think you said you have a stool that you have to, to step up on to, to, cut hair as well too like it's very just like taxing on your like you just feel very drained yeah. overall correct yeah yeah, yeah. i do mm. yeah i mean how many how many haircuts like were you like again at that at that booked out 55 level like how many haircuts were you doing like a, a day on average how many hours were you working a day let's say 
So there was a point where I was I was really just trying to take as many haircuts as possible mm. because I was just in that mindset. Yeah, I, I just felt like I needed to fit people in. Mm. People ask me, you know, like I just want to be a, a people pleaser and be like, oh, okay, you know. But then I it reached the point where I was getting so tired that I was like, okay, I need to start setting some boundaries. This is not yeah. okay. You know, I can't have people getting haircuts during my lunch or when I was supposed to have a break because I was like, there's one day where I was literally standing behind my chair for like eight hours straight. I did not sit down or anything. And I sat down. It was just like, ugh, like, I was just like, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. and my, yeah. I start, I was trying to walk and my knees just like, they felt all fucked up. I was like, this is not it, man. Yeah. And so I started setting more boundaries and when I was more booked out, I started controlling my schedule a little bit more. Mm. So I was like, okay, you know, where can I fit them out of, what's the sweet spot where I can have this amount of income and do maybe like six cuts a day and then just, you know, be, what am I trying to say? Just basically control my schedule and then people will book wherever accordingly i wouldn't yeah. fit people in anymore and if they wanted to be fit in i just had like a, a premium price in the in the morning like at 8 a.m yeah. which wasn't even that much it was just it was like ten dollars more but yeah, yeah for, for, you know trust me i remember i remember one year like i did new year's i was cutting like till fuck maybe like 10 11 p.m one night i think it was like either new year's or, or christmas eve and yeah. i was like oh yeah it's gonna be premium price it's gonna be like five bucks for the first two hours and after that it's gonna be like <laughs> 10 bucks more i was like i'm i'm about to make some bank yeah what a dumbass for like thinking that and i was like yeah that's good that's i'm i'm gonna rank in bank on that day for sure and this yeah, one i was like charging 16 20 bucks <laughs> so it's like i'm not even getting tipped i'm not even getting paid 30 bucks a cut for this thing they was like oh I'm getting this cut in for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to be fresh for the holidays for sure. Fact. Fact. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to just come in at midnight. Fuck that. Yeah. Um, I, guess, I guess for you, and I mean, obviously, like, you've, you've gone through a, a, a lot of changes over the last 12 months. Like, what, what, what are, like, some of the changes you're most proud about over the last 12 months, not only just, like, as a businesswoman, but also as you as an individual? For me as an individual, I think this ties into my business as well. I, I'm glad that I was able to move out and really create a productive environment for myself. Mm. Um, I felt home wasn't too bad, but it was, I just felt like I needed to get out of it to be able to progress further in my life. So mm. I'm proud of myself for making that move and being able to provide for myself solely. Um, as a business person, I think it all just, it really just ties in together, both sure. business and personal, just thinking bigger, wanting more for myself, dreaming bigger. I think that that was a huge change for me because mm. I would see a lot of things as unattainable, unattainable. I would look at certain things like, oh, it must be nice, but yeah. I'm never going to have that or yeah. Seeing even just a hundred K as this, Ooh, oh my gosh, a hundred K, that's a lot of money. Like, yeah. or once you hit a hundred K, you've made it. But yeah. Putting that into real life now, it's like hundred K is not even that much. Mm. It's not that much money. Like people with a hundred that are making a hundred K, like they're like, they're maybe, they're like, okay. They're yeah. It's, it's not like what it was, like not what it was like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, for sure. Yeah, exactly. I went but, to fucking Whole Foods to grab like three things, cost me like a hundred bucks. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I just started thinking bigger and wanting more for myself and not putting myself at such a low level and start believing that I can have those things. I can be at that level if I just do the work that is required to get there. Mm. Mm. what's like your message to like any barber like i guess like being in the position you are now obviously at the hundred dollar price point i know obviously probably like anna 18 years old whatever you were charging uh what would like it would probably be like super proud of yourself i mean i've I already told you like once once we ran your numbers uh through the message i sent you like a a fucking loom telling you how proud i was of you but uh what's what's like i guess like your message to like other barbers out there 
um, in the industry who, who might either be struggling, maybe in that same mental mindset as you of like, oh, again, she's like, oh, that might be nice. Oh, it's not me in terms of like I, making income wise or making money wise. Like what, what would your message be to them? And I know you, you talk about this a lot too, but everything that you have up to this point, everything you, you know only brought you up to this point in your life. Mm. So if you want to push forward, if you want more for your life, then you have to understand what what do you need to get you there? What education do you need? What mentors or what skill sets do you have to learn to be able to get to that point? And then keep reinvesting in yourself till, and I mean, the game never really stops. There's always more and more levels to it. So keep reinvesting in yourself so that you can push forward and get to those dreams and those goals that you want. 100%. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in just like every, like, again, for myself, I like, I try to spend almost like the majority of everything back into myself in the business of like learning education wise, right? Because I, I like, I know, I've, I mean, I've talked about this before to you guys on like Q&A calls. I've, I think I've said this on content before. Um, there's a, pheno- a couple phenomenal books I read. It's like, um, Why Nations Fail. And then also there's another one that uh, Ray Dilo uh, came out with, like, um, fuck maybe like why nations succeed or something like I, it was something about like like uh why why civilizations like succeed or something along those lines and it mm-hmm. basically like detail I, I brought the graph on a q a call one time and it, it just struck me to my core when it was like the it was like the second the the first second or third it was like the very very beginning of any great civilization one of the key pillars that was like education right and learning mm-hmm. that was like the key pi- it wasn't like it was like they, later down the road it's like first they had to have like a good like uh, uh, government system or a good like I guess like uh, structure of like order right like there's somebody at the head or there's people who are like okay cool there's a hierarchy of people and then there's people who are working and like everybody's kind of like I guess unifies and agrees to, like work as a unit instead mm-hmm. of, you know instead of everybody working as like separate and then once mm-hmm. you get that structure and then it's like then you have to get the education of everybody so that people can improve themselves yes. right the system can't yeah. improve they just like stay the same like ideas especially civilization especially like, just thinking like i don't know think about countries like u.s soviet union back in the day or like any different type of like countries trying to progress themselves like you race mm-hmm. the space and like i always just kept on like this kept that at the forefront of my mind like all these great things and great uh i guess um what's it called civilizations empires anything you want to call them always started with education and made that a key point and then mm-hmm. too on the down tick of things like what it, it could even be in like success of individuals success of like athletes rappers entrepreneurs businesses again civilizations empires they always started that flip of like they got off the education part and like started like at the at the peak and downturn of things they got too focused on like pleasures right i think mm-hmm. there was like there was a study that was done where it was like <clears throat> And don't quote me on this, anyone, but it was like when the Roman Empire started to collapse, like they were really big on education. But when they started to collapse, I think like 30 percent of like the civilization started to turn to like partying, drinking and just like basically like being being um, uh, just just not being net positives to the civilization. They just started like again, like being degenerates right yeah. and like like uh you know having too much sex just like like going to like these big festivals and stuff and i think that's that's the same thing of like you can nail that down to whether it be like again civilization not jesus fuck civilization like that or like you know you can scale it down to a company or even scale it down to, to an individual level and i think they're great yeah. principles to follow so i think yeah. you're 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 right on the market that you always have to be like reinvesting in self or at least the education part where there's books there's so much stuff out there just to start improving self but you have mm-hmm. to do that if you always want to like continue like to to get the next level forward so yeah um 100 and i mean like i, I want to give you your flowers because at the end of the day like like i already told you this it's been a fucking one hell of a fucking ride so far working with you as a, as one of our private clients elevate mentorship program um i i you, you I already told you this from the get-go like you, because you're from Sacramento, like I always, I was like, you, you had a special place with me, like, cause I was like, man, I hope she fucking kills it. I hope she does. And you came in fucking like lock the fuck in, got the work done. We had bumps in the road, but like, you didn't let it affect you. And I think it's like one of the key things I'm just always so like, not only proud, but also I, I look up to in you as well too. Cause like you will continue pushing forward no matter what, again, stuff gets hard for everybody, but I've, I've yet to hear it as an excuse of like, yeah, stuff will go bad, but you're like, you know what? I'm going to get it fixed and then get right back to it. There's no excuse of like, oh, woe is me. You're really headstrong. I think that's one of the reasons, core core reasons is your success. I mean, fuck, who knows? Maybe a couple of years from now, or maybe like uh, soon, 
I'll do a uh, uh, one of those one of those YouTube uh, breakdown videos on why Anna Anna Cuts is fucking dominating, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of the core reasons to her success, right? Of like like why why you keep going for it. It, it, but it's it's facts though. Like and I just I really look up to it and, I'm, and like. I've always talked like like uh, I remember like w- whether it be me in Paris like our CSM team uh, we'll have meetings in meetings uh, talking about like how your business is going I'm like watch Anna's gonna fucking kill it so I've always had like a really 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 like um, really been in your corner cheering for you not only because you were one of my private clients but also just because like I know your mentality you just came in like I don't know I, I felt like you you just had the same mentality as me being in Sacramento where trust me we both know Sacramento isn't is like a more very laid back place to, to be at which is not a problem. But yeah. overall, like like um, you just taking over, I, I knew there was something special with you. So I just want to say, like like I'm so proud of you. Number one, number two, I, I can't wait to see what again the next like maybe a couple months holds for you. I know we're got looking to maybe get you up to 150 next few months, and then really see where we want to go with the business. And like I, I really just want this off. Like no matter what you do, Anna, like I, I know you're gonna succeed. No matter what anybody else says, I know you're gonna fucking succeed at anything you do because of that mentality, because of your work ethic, because of like again, too, you don't just st- fucking quit. And that has a lot to say. Uh, at least a lot to speak on about your success. And I think it's a lot of what everybody could take away, whether you're watching uh, the interview or even you know Anna personally in the program. Just watch, like, success leaves clues. Legit. Like, this, and Anna is just an incredible human being, but also, too, she's just straight focus. Straight, at the end of the day, fucking killer. I always know from day one. So, uh, other than that, I mean, go ahead. What did you say? I really appreciate that. Like, just... Having your support, it really means a lot. Yeah, no, trust me. Whenever I, whenever I see you, I mean, like, first of all, I always get mangoes, so that's always a plus right there. <laughs> my 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 health coach might not be too happy about you giving me some mangoes, me me not being able to hold back me you know, a whole bag of mangoes by myself. But yeah. like, you know, overall, like like yo, know, like again, I, I it's just been such a. I've been waiting on this this interview too, so I, I thank you for at least hopping on. Um, and then again, to just just being a. Again, just being that individual who, who's a testament to like what barbers can do, because I think uh, you, you're going to inspire a lot of people just from like actually doing the work, going through the hard hard levels of like you know maybe you want to quit, maybe you don't want to quit, and actually getting the results. So kudos to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember one of the first voice mes- messages you sent me on Instagram. It's like, and you have the chance to fucking take over Sacramento. Like I, yeah. I remember just hearing that, and I was like. You know, shit. He really believes in me. Like this is, yeah. this, oh, okay. Yeah, like, I yeah. This. And it it helps a lot. It really does. I yeah. No, I, I, you know what's hilarious? I actually remember that because I remember like I like because I also like I'll send messages like that, and then I always like I always see what people say back to me, right? And, and when yeah. I want to give them something, I'm like the, the, their reply back always lets me know who they are. And you just type in all fucking caps. Let's go! I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill it. <laughs> I was like, Anna's gonna oh, fucking. <laughs> Yeah. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, of course. Of course. Appreciate you too.